Hello, this is Oleg and I'm coming to you from Silicon Valley, California with another episode of TypeScript on the Mantles and today we will start with part one of our discussion about classes. Today we will see how static and instance properties work, how we can attach methods to our classes and later on we will see the difference between TypeScript classes and classes that are provided to us by ES2015. We came a long way with Rainbow application. So far we have app.ts file where we call our main function. Also we organized our code using utils module that we developed. So you remember we utilize yarn and webpack to serve our files. If you need a fresh copy of the source code, you can go to github.com slash and right now we'll be working in classes branch. Let's go ahead and create our first class. Our class will have name of app. We want to have constructor function inside of our class. The constructor fun function will be executed once app class gets instantiated. Inside the constructor function, we might declare properties with some values that are going to be used throughout our class. So let's say we remember that we have this rainbow string, which is the name of element there that we are grabbing in our DOM. So let's say we have this dot ID, which is equal in our case to rainbow. We'll put the actual string right now for simplicity. And we see that TypeScript is trying to help us here, saying that property ID does not exist on type app. And this is the example of major difference between ES2015 and TypeScript because in ES2015 classes this would be absolutely proper just to declare a property and assign value. But in TypeScript we have to put our property name at the very beginning right here. This is actually enough. We can put semicolons if we want. And right now it will be of type any which is not what we want. So we can specify the value type right here. In our case it is string. So this property definition is not optional in TypeScript, but it is really helpful if someone comes later on and will try to figure out what our class is doing. This self-documentation will be very helpful. We will add the rest of the values that we're gonna use in our application. So it will be this style name border color and we'll also set timeout which is a number in our case Visual Studio gives us option to use this help at declaration for missing property we will get our properties defined for us automatically so we don't have to do extra work. Now what we're gonna do, we will refactor our main function and we will say that it should take app component and inside we will instantiate this class. Let's actually just for clarity add class here at the end of the name. So this is gonna be our app equals new app component class and we will pass it further right here and here at the function call we have to put actual app class that we declared before obviously our application is broken right now because our mutate element function is not ready to accept app object created by app class so what we're gonna do we will go into our utils.ts file and we will change mutate element function so it looks like an older version of our app so let's keep this else section only so now this function should take app object now let's rename this app component just to element now our app will replace the options object that we had before so we will rename the symbol to app now we will change this options or id we will change app component to element what we also can do we can move this app class into utils file we'll keep it here we have to export it and import it here also we will 
tell mutate element function that its parameter has to be of type app and it is complaining because we messed up our property names so let's change it back so it is consistent so we have element id element id style instead of style name and interval for timeout because it's not timeout it's the interval that we have okay now everything looks okay so we can see that our webpack compiled successfully we will go ahead and see if our web page is not broken everything seems to be working fine let's refresh the page again and see if we don't have any errors yeah those two are old errors from the browser plugin that i have yeah so everything looks okay let's go ahead and do some refactoring and clean up our code so this interface is not relevant anymore in our situation but it is a great candidate for us to make it an interface we'll put it here on top it's a good practice to keep our interfaces and top and types at the top of our document now we can tell that app implements i app interface we remember that we have the special type that we defined before so we can use it here instead of a string let's move this generate color function all the way here because it's kind of helper function that we don't care about a lot also we will use interface to do the type annotation for app parameter and let's go ahead and change our main function a little bit because it looks like we are trying to overcomplicate things we will directly call app class right here now let's see the difference between instance and static property of our app class at this point all our properties are instance properties since they are getting a value inside of constructor function so that means that we have to instantiate our class and create an app object but let's imagine that there is a reason for us to keep our property static what that means let's start with the syntax just for the convenience we will move this property up here now we'll use static keyword and important part is that we will assign the value right here at this point we can remove this reference and we see that our TypeScript compiler is complaining and the reason for that is that right in our interface we have mentioned element id as a string and the fact is that interface describes the instance of a class not the class itself so we can remove this line from interface now everything looks fine so let's see how we can use static property in mutate element function we in multiple places have reference to app instance and we are accessing properties as you can see now with static property we can directly call the getter function on lid so if we replace app instance with app class we can access element id property just like this compilation went through fine so let's go ahead and see if the actual app is working okay we'll refresh the page color is getting changed which means application is working let's try to implement something similar with regular javascript function just for educational purpose let's call it var underscore app it will be a constructor function now to define uh, instance properties we would do this style equals some string okay, we would do the same for interval and at this moment we created app constructor function which we can use with new keyword to instantiate 
the actual object. But if we want to define static property the old way, we would assign the property on the function itself. So we would do underscore app dot lid and we would give a value here. So this is how it actually looks if we wanted to implement the similar functionality in old good is five way. Yeah, let's remove those lines and let's see how our class looks now. The fact is that we st still don't have a method on our class and what kind of class it is without a good method. So let's create one. The syntax is very intuitive and we will define our method. We will call it start on init. It will not take any parameters but it will have function body just like any function body. It will not return anything and what it's gonna have inside will be stuff from mutate element function. Okay now we can remove this export completely at the same way at the same time remove this import from our app.tc app.ts and let's call this function on our app instance. It's not gonna work right now because we are not passing the app the way we did it before but what we can do we can use this context of our class instance and we will use this reference instead of app but we have one problem here which will break our app since this context inside of set interval will not be what we expect because we use the regular function here what we have to do is to use arrow function in order to keep this value to what we expect so compilation goes fine let's go ahead and see how our application is doing color is again getting changed with mean which means our app is working fine and we just added a method on our class which we call at the beginning to initiate our app and start the process of changing color every 1500 milliseconds today we learned quite a few things about classes in typescript we went through properties static versus instance properties and also we created our first method of app class if you like this video please subscribe and see you in part 2 of TypeScript classes.